tour day can start out any time of the morning, 6.30, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. That was through the 1950s. Then with the limited test ban treaty, we went to underground testing and tests were done anywhere from 600 feet to 2,000 feet underground. Uh, and we went through extensive reviews to assure that that radioactive material would stand aground, that there wouldn't be any ventings coming up to the surface. In all, the United States has done 1,054 nuclear weapons tests, and of that, 928 of those were done here at the Nevada test sites. And the first thing that visitors see when they come to the test site is the Frenchman Dry Lake Bed. That's where the first atmospheric tests were conducted out here on the test site. The first test was conducted on January 27, 1951. The people from a distance, they'll see the dry lake bed and it's hard to see anything. But once we start getting onto the dry lake bed when you're driving through, you see a lot of different structures. There's the hotel motel walls. What the scientists were doing with those is they built the faces of those out of different types of materials, brick, mortar, concrete block. And they wanted to see what the pressures from the blast would do to those walls, what would stand up, what wouldn't stand up. Um, you also see an old railroad bridge that is sitting out there. And it's pretty remarkable because it's, it's one of the things that really gives you a good idea what the heat and blast effects. You've got these very thick I-beams that have been bent almost like spaghetti uh, that the train was setting on top of. Some of the other things that you see when you're out there, there's some concrete domes. What we know about the principles of hardening of concrete were developed out there on Frenchman Flat at the test site. The scientists used different types of mixtures of concrete, of mortar, mixed with rebar, different sizes of rebar, so they could understand how to harden concrete. One of the more unusual things that's also out there on, on Frenchman Flat is the uh, old bank vault. Uh, the standards that U.S. bank vaults are built today are built based on the tests that they did out there at the site. They built an actual vault and you can see where the sides have been peeled away from the blast, but the contents that were inside that vault at the time of the blast survived all of that. So what they were looking at is, is construction of items, how they would withstand the heat and blast. They weren't looking at the, the effects of the radiation, but how things would hold up to the heat and blast. And so a lot of modern day standards that we have for structures that we have now, bank vaults for a multitude of things, have come about as a result of the atmospheric testing that took place there on Frenchman Flat during the atmospheric testing days. ICECAP was to be the last underground nuclear test that was going to be conducted here on the test site before the moratorium was signed in 1992. But events of the world caught up with us here at the Nevada test site and the moratorium was signed and that test was never conducted. And what you have left standing there is the tower and inside that tower is the canister that would have held the nuclear device. Uh, an 1800 foot hole is there, all the cables are on the ground and some of the support trailers are still sitting there. Those support trailers is where all the information would have come up the cables and been re would have been recorded in those uh, trailers and as well as a part of redundancy those signals would have been sent here to the control point and recorded in the control point. This is the control point at the Nevada test site. The control point is where everything happens on the day of an experiment. All the scientists, the technician, the security people, anybody that's associated with the experiment are here in the control point. This is where all the information comes into to tell the scientist if their experiment has been successful. In essence, it becomes the nerve center for the test site on the day of an experiment. Sedan Crater was done in 1962, July of 1962. It was part of the Plowshare program where they were looking for peaceful uses for nuclear weapons. What they were trying to see is if you could take uh, a very large device, in this case it was 104 kilotons, and use it to dig a canal, a lake, uh, if you could blast away mountains to make a, a pass for a highway system. They wanted to see if you could use a nuclear device to dig with. The answer to the question is yes. and it shows you the force that you can have from a 104 kiloton nuclear device.
So what the Civil Defense Agency of the time did was create um, American homes, wood structures, brick structures, two-story homes with basements. And they outfitted these homes with everything that you would find in a modern 1955 home. Uh, they put mannequins inside, they put food, they put cars, they put radios that were working. Everything in the house was fully operational that you would find of the time. Then after the test, the Apple II test, they came in to see what the effects were on that American home so that they as a civil defense agency could prepare some type of preparedness plans that uh, the American citizens could use.